Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hong. Okay, can you hear me from the back? Yes, can you hear me from the back? Okay, great. All right, so uh, as all of you uh, uh, know very well, have known um, this uh, recent events on the allegations of scientific misconduct in Taiwan. And if you have followed closely all the news, that you would realize there is a deep problem. At least that's my view, okay? And I believe it is a systematic problem. It's a system problem. It's just not a wine scientist doing something terrible. So, and through our education, including myself, I have hardly been educated about what are supposed to be the right ways to do science in terms of research integrity. And we typically model our mentors. Depends on how they do things, we kind of follow what they have done. And through my years of education and services as a faculty member at Ohio State University for many years, it has never crossed my mind once that I should do something that is not terrible that you have seen today. So it was quite shocking to me in recent days that I had, I kept following this news and then I, I, I just get very, very unsettled about the whole issue. But today's talk is not trying to dig out some more dirt uh, of this particular recent event and then you will be disappointed because I'm not going to talk about it. What I'm going to try to do is to start it out with the some short stories, and then I would take you to the point what, to define what is scientific misconduct, and then we go from there. Okay, so as I said, I would talk about story, and from those stories, what kind of lesson we learn from there. All right, so can, so you, can you see this quite clearly, right? So the first story I wanna talk about is David Barnimore case. This is the pro perhaps the most famous, most high profile case in scientific misconduct research integrity case. David Barnimore, as most of you know, is a Nobel Prize winner who discovered reverse transcriptase that earned him a Nobel Prize at a very young age. And make no mistake, he is the world legendary scientist in molecular biology. His contribution is just immense but he gets entrapped into scientific misconduct. And let's take a look at his story. So in 1986, he published a paper together with uh, Dr. Iman Shirikari, also a junior faculty at MIT, in Cell. So now when you publish a paper in Cell, in Nature, in Nature Cell Biology, you bet everybody's going to take a very close look of your paper. All right? So very soon, question will arise at MIT. You know? And then raising the objection about potential scientific misconduct or data manipulation. And then local inv investigation was initiated in, uh, within MIT. And then in 1986 and 1989, Dr. Dari Moore has to be called to the US Congress to attend the hearing. And then the congressman questioned him. And then uh, you challenge him. It was very bad. You don't want to be like that in that position. You certainly do not want to be in that position. And most incredibly, US Secret Service was called into service. Secret Service was called into service. That was my pun, okay? So they retract all their notebook including all the simulation counter printout to determine whether those are fake or real. And forensic analysis show that there's potential but cannot be sure about the potential misconduct. Then in 1991, NIH Office of Science Investigation concluded that there's a serious scientific misconduct. And Dr. David Baltimore was forced to retract the cell paper. Now, the way that David Barrymore got involved in, in the uh, uh, Iman Nishikari is because they are co-author, co-corresponding author. And uh, David Barrymore stand behind her to support her. 
and so the, the paper was retracted. And that forced him to retire, to, to resign from Rockefeller University presidency. At the time, he was already become a president of Rockefeller University. All of you know that is very, very high profile university. So then, unfortunately, unfortunately, in 1993, scientists in Stanford University, as well as in Columbia University, demonstrated that their papers, scientific papers finding hold up. Okay? Then in 1994, the NIH Office Research Integrity, ORI, uh, his final report said that they are data fabrication, they are data fabrication and potential cover up. And then the whole thing just dragged on. So this is already eight years, okay? And then in 1996, the uh, US Department of Health and Human Res uh, Services, which is the boss of N N H N uh, NIH, overturned the ORI's uh, final report. So they essentially cleared David Barrymore and his uh, co co corresponding author's uh, uh, names. But it took 10 years. And during that 10 years, the Dr. Imani uh, Shidkari was essentially fired from the Tufts University. And 10 years later, she was reinstalled as a faculty member. And the whole thing started out by an allegation from a postdoc of uh, Dr. Imani Shikari's lab, and then claiming that uh, she fabricated some data or falsified some data. So it took 10 years. So this is very, very serious, widely reported uh, case here. Okay, so that's the first story. The first story is about even if you are Nobel laureate, you are not immune from that kind of problem. Okay? So the second story is about Hendrik Schoen's scandal. Dr. Sh uh, Dr. Schoen uh, obtained his PhD in 1997 from the University of Constance. That's a German, German university. And uh, he, uh, he, he worked on the condensed matter physics and nanotechnology. He worked at Bell Lab, US Bell Lab. Then in 2001, he published one paper every eight days. <laughs> one paper every eight days. Yellow flag or red flag should have been raised at that time. How could one possibly be so prolific, productive? And the worst thing is that he publishes paper in these journals. Science, Nature, Physics Review. Physics Review is the top journals in the physics field. And by the end, the whole issue was investigated. He, must, he, has, he was forced to retract nine papers from Science, seven papers from Nature, six papers from Physics Review. So think about it. Okay, so this is a young, rising star, superstar, and so prolific. Okay, so that's story number two. Story number three is our neighbor, came from our neighbor in Japan. Okay, so the, this person set the world record of retractions. Okay, so uh, try to guess what, how many people he has to retract, okay? I, I will leave that at last point to see how close you are. Dr. Fushi uh, Yoshit, Yoshitaka, okay? So he is MD. He worked in ethnology, okay? And uh, he worked in three different universities, Tokyo Medical and Dendo University, Tsubuka University, and Toho University. And he was very, very prolific. By the end of the time, he has to retract 183 papers. That, so far, is a world record. You must be wondering in your mind, how could that possibly be? How could one fake so many papers? It happens. Now, the next one is not too far from that. That's again from our neighbor, okay, Dr. Shin Shigaoki Kato. 
Okay. So he is a PhD now. He worked in the carnology. Okay. And uh, he worked at University of Tokyo, esteemed university, top university in the world. So at the very end, he was forced to retract 25 papers with 43 suspected heptera manipulations, image manipulations. But once again, these papers are not no small paper. They are in these journals. Okay? Cell, Nature, Science, Genes and Development, uh, Nature, Cell Biology, Embo Journal, MCB, you name it. You will be proud of yourself. You will get a paper in there, right? But he published so many papers and was forced to retract it. So then the question was raised, how could that possibly happen? And University of Tokyo, uh, have a committee and investigate this issue for a long time, eventually come to the conclusion that it is a lab culture problem. I will come back to readdress this issue and because that's very important for PIs in the, in the audience. It's a lab culture problem. Dr. Cato create a culture that is very oppressive. That is, he, is, he has a very powerful personality. He insists to see things he wants to see. He refused to accept data that does not conform to his hypothesis. So when the young graduate students have no, you know, you know they, they just don't have the courage to counter him, so they fake the data. So once you get one faked, how about the second one? The next one that work on that project, then it just becomes snowballing, more and more and more. Okay, so you see here, this is a successful scientist. These are successful scientists mid or mid career. Okay, so you have David Barrymore who is Nobel laureate. You have Sean that was a young rising star. You have these profess two professors, and all from very very good university or top labs. And 